Hi, afternoon everyone. Um, welcome to my update on the projects that we are currently running at Phyla. Um, for those of you that, are, that don't know what Phyla is or you haven't been able to visit us, uh, Phyla is a phytosanitary research laboratory that was constructed by Hortgrow. Uh, specifically to look at the phytosanitary needs of the industry. Um, as this is very important for market access and market sustainability. So within this facility, we are able to examine new and old uh, treatments and technologies and examine the viability to control specific um, insects while maintaining fruit quality. So a very much integrated approach. <coughs> Sorry. So at the facility, we are also able to upscale a lot quicker. Because of the versatile infrastructure, we can go from small desiccated trials to larger cold room and even shipping container trials just at that facility. So at the facility, we have uh, four cold rooms that we have modified so that we can um, manage or change the, the atmosphere within each. So we have nitrogen generating systems on site. One of these cold rooms we've designated for fumigation purposes. Uh, it has spark proof fans, lights, other sensors, um, because we need to adhere to a lot of government guidelines um, and regulations according to that. Last week we've uh, installed an ozone generating as well as ethylene monitoring system. So all of these tools just expands uh, the, the tool set that we have um, for doing research going forward. The cornerstone of this integrated approach for us is the insectary. Um, the insectary plays a crucial part in supplying my projects with healthy and the numbers that we need um, successfully. So the insectary is really a key part um, of this whole system. And we are very lucky to have that on site. So we can control the type of colonies we need, we can control, obviously, the numbers we're trying to rear, and we can have quality procedures in place to make sure that we are rearing the healthiest possible insects that we can, because field collection for the trials um, that I'm going to do is definitely not viable. We've also added an additional room recently where if we inoculate insects into fruit, we can put them in a, in a room where they can just incubate so they can reach the life stage we need for treatment. Um, so this makes it a lot easier to prevent any contamination into the rest of the facility. We also have a fruit evaluation lab on site where we can look at things like fruit firmness, color, sugar, bricks, any parameter that might have potentially been influenced by the, by the treatment or not influenced by the treatment. So the colonies we currently have on site includes a false codling moth, codling moth, banded fruit weevils, madefly, and red spider mites. Um, and as I said earlier, to have these colonies happy and healthy is super crucial as field collection for the amount of trials and the work we want to do is definitely not feasible. So the, the projects at Phyla can be grouped into two sections at the moment. We have temperature trials, which consist out of cold sterilization trials, and then we have a lot of fumigation trials that we're going to be doing. So um, one of them is ozone fumigation. Initially, it was mostly on perm, but there are also stone fruit applications. Uh, we'll be looking at ultra-low um, fumigation with and without nitric oxide, as well as this new development where we are trying to uh, create a polymer, so like packaging, where we can incorporate ethyl formate into it so that over time you can release the ethyl formate and potentially control the, the target test, uh, test <laughs> insect um, or pest uh, pathogen. So if we look at the cold sterilization trials, I'm just going to sort of focus more on the, the temperature side of things. Um, we are going to be looking at insect mortality and fruit quality when we expose it to different temperatures and durations. So for this, we are using wireless probes um, that are supplied by gas at site. 
They measure um, temperature, ambient, and pulp every five minutes. And then this data, I can, from an app on my phone, I can look at a live feed or I can pull the data from a, my phone or a PC. So it, it makes data extraction in terms of temperature data a lot more efficient um, and super easy. So this is just an example of what the probes look like. Um, there's just a little snapshot of an Excel sheet where I pulled out the data where you can see it was logging it every five minutes. Traceability and accountability is very important, so I need timestamps um, on everything. The uh, graph um, to the right is just an example of what the ambient temperature was for a room that we set at 1.1 so that we can see what the deviation is over time. So for that specific instance, the room was set at 1.1 and the average temperature over that time period was 1.14. The second example, I have 12 minutes, right? Or 10 minutes, right? Okay, just checking. <laughs> I heard the alarm go off. Um, so the second example is a, a room that we set at 2.2 uh, so that we could see what the ambient and once again what the pulp temperature variation looked like. For ambient, the variation was very low. The set point was 2.2 with an average of 2.18. Pulp temperature, there was an average of 2.31 over the time period. So we still fall within the acceptable limits for variation in temperature. So coming uh, to the ozone fumigation section, um, for ozone, we will be looking at its ability to rupture and weaken cell membranes. The USA already use it to control mold and fungi, um, and it's also been found that you can control uh, a western black widow spider on table grapes, for example, on it, with it. So we are going to be looking at the potential of using it on some of our internal in uh, external insects. So the objectives once we've done commissioning on the unit is to look at what post-harvest pathogens we can control um, using ozone as well as the external pests that we can try and, and kill as well as the sanitation effect it has on uh, various surface areas like bins and lugs um, and even the fruit to see if we can get the spore count, the spore count lower. So for that, we will be using a, a central composite design that will take into account different concentrations and durations. And then hopefully that will give us a better framework of what treatment we would be able to use to kill a specific pest um, or pathogen. So those are just the uh, examples of the units we had installed. So it's a, a ozone generating unit as well as an analyzing unit that has been manufactured uh, in, in Cape Town. When looking at ultra-low um, fumigation, it's, it's pretty much we want to create a hypoxic environment, either at ambient or during cold storage to try and, and see if it's an alternative disinfestation treatment. So by looking at that, we discovered that nitric oxide is one of the new fumigants people have been working on, and you need an ultra-low environment to actually use it properly. So that's why we've combined the, the two projects. So for this, we're first going to start off with small sealed units um, where we can create the atmosphere or dose we want inside the container. We can then close it up either leave it at ambient for whatever duration or put it into the cold room um, to see if an added stress would increase mortality. So this is just an objective of the, of the overview, object, this is an overview of the objectives uh, that we want to look at for ultra low and then combining it with nitric oxide. So with nitric oxide, we have the potential to uh, control internal pests as well. So for ultra low, we'll just be looking at external uh, in combination with nitric oxide, internal and external. And if there's a feasible treatment, we will then overlay all of this with fruit quality. So every time if we find a treatment wh that works, we'll bring it back and overlay it with fruit quality to make sure that there's no negative effect on fruit quality. Uh, this is just an example of what the ultra-low system looks like that we have designed. So we can program it um, to pump a specific atmosphere composition into those containers. Once that's been reached, we can close them up, 
put them aside or put them in the cold room for whatever duration we need. So for this, we're also using a central composite design. So we give it parameters and then statistically, it'll tell you what variations or permeations you need to run so that we can get a better idea of uh, what would be effective to control uh, the target pest. For this, when we're going to include nitric oxide, we just need to make a couple of modifications because we need to vent uh, nitric oxide uh, more efficiently. So the trials we currently have running, we're only using ultra low oxygen and we're working with mealybugs, red spider mites, grain chinch bug and banded fruit weevil. So as I'm always working on grain chinch bug, I'm just gonna show you some prelim data on chinch bug. So the lower the oxygen level in the containers, the higher the mortality. But interestingly enough, if we added CO2, for example, to the 1.1 uh, percent oxygen, we could increase mortality to 94 percent. So that is where the central composite design really helps to try and get you in a direction where you can increase mortality even more. So last but not least um, is the, the development of a polymer. So this has been building on years of work that we've been doing with ethyl formate, and the idea is to create something like an SO2 sheet, um, something in packaging where we can incorporate ethyl formate, and by putting it into a cold room, the humidity will release it at a specific rate so that we can get a, a dose that will control either the target pest or have an effect on, on pathogens. So I have a postdoc that is actually developing this for me. So I'd just like to thank everyone involved. Um, it, takes, it takes a team to get all of this up and running and going. So I just want to thank everyone.